Welcome to lecture two, declaring variables. So before I start talking about variables and what they are and why we use them, I want to talk about data. Every program that you will write and every program that exists already uses data, whether it be numbers like one, two, three, or whether it be text like the word hello. Programs use data. And variables are just a way that we can store that data. So by definition, variables are simply a named storage location. They're a storage location, so a place that where we can store things like data, like numbers. I need to store the number five somewhere. I'll, I'll put it into a variable. So that's the storage location part of a variable. But then I also said that a variable is a named storage location. The named means that we attach a name to that variable, so we give it something that, that is meaningful. And by doing that, that allows us to access that variable so that we can store things or manipulate things in that variable. Without a name, we wouldn't be able to directly access it. So we wouldn't be able to say, okay, put this data there, because we wouldn't know where to put it. That name gives us, gives us something to put it to. It's like a locker, for example. If you have a, a line of lockers, but none of the lockers have a locker number, you wouldn't know where to put your books into your locker because they're not organized, they're not numbered. Once you put the numbering system onto the lockers, then you know, okay, this is locker 100, so I can put my books in there. So that 100 is basically the locker's name. And that's exactly what's going on with variables. We can't, we have all these storage locations like lockers, but we need to give them all separate names so that we know, okay, go to this spot and put the information in there. So that's where the name storage location comes from. We give it a name. So with that being said, how do we create a variable? So there's a couple components that we need to create a, a variable. The first thing we need is a data type. The data type specifies what type of data that the variable can hold and also how much memory is being allocated in RAM for that memory location. So there's a couple of basic data types that we'll be using in the start of this course. And then as, as time goes on, uh, we'll use more and more data types. So the five most basic data types we're going to use is int, int. I'll write it. So int, this is an integer and it can hold a whole number. It has a range of approximately negative 2 billion to like positive 2 billion. And that's where the memory comes into play. So when I say integer for my variable, it's allocating space that can hold an integer and it's also allocating it for that certain amount of memory for a number that's in that range. So like I said, integers can hold whole numbers. It's like one, two, three. That means no decimals. You cannot store a 5.5 because that has a decimal. So integers are whole numbers. We also have double. Double this, a double can hold a, a floating point number or a double, I mean, or a decimal. So if I wanted to store the number 5.5 somewhere, I could use a double. We also have string. Strings are text. For example, the word hello or the wor word world, These are this is text. So I would store that into a string. So a string can hold text. We also have bool. A bool can hold one of two things, either true or false. That is it. So it could actually hold the word true or false, which is actually a value. So you'll type in true or false. They're key words. See, so true and false. So a bool can hold true or false. And the last basic data type that we'll be using is character, C-H-A-R. And this can hold a single character, like the character A or B or the character 1 or a space. These are all separate characters. So a string is basically a group of characters because a string can hold, hold a word like hello, but a character can only hold one character. So that is the first component of a variable, it's, is its data type. The next thing a variable needs 
is its identifier, and this is its name, like I said. The identifier is how we identify that variable and how we access it and how we remember where it is. That's what the identifier is for. So this is just some kind of name. For example, so the first component is a data type, so int. Let's say I have int and then the identifier. So I'm going to give it some kind of name. So I'm going to say my int. So the name of my variable so far is called my int. So the next thing I need is the equal sign. Now this is the assignment operator in C sharp. Basically the assignment operator is says that anything to the right hand side of the assignment operator will be assigned to whatever is on the left hand side. So with that definition you can think that on the right hand side there needs to be some kind of value that can go into the left hand side which is an integer. So I'm going to say 5. So 5 is a perfect candidate for an integer. It is a whole number, and it's in the range of an integer. So this, the assignment operator says, okay, take the 5 on the right-hand side and put it into whatever's on the left-hand side. The left-hand side has an integer, a variable more specifically, so I'm going to put this 5 into that variable. The last thing we need for our variable is a semicolon. The semicolon just indicates that this is the end of the statement. We performed one statement and this is the end. You'll see this basically all the time in C Sharp programming. So when I create a variable and give it a value at the same time I'm declaring it, this is called initialization. I'm initializing this variable to the value 5. Now that means that I don't essentially have to give it a value right away. I could say instead int my int 2 semicolon. Notice how I did not use the assignment operator and give it a value. Both of these are variables, however my int has a value right away initially, so it's initialized. The other one, this has no value currently right now. It's actually going to be using its default value instead of any value that we tell it to be until we assign it later. So let's remove this line for a second. So once again, this is a variable. My int is the identifier for this variable. This is a storage location. So my int currently is a storage location that's holding the number 5. That's all it's doing. It's holding the number 5 in memory for us. Now, after I declare it and initialize it, I can change the value because it's a variable. A variable can change at any time. So later on in my code, let's say I do other things, but then I eventually want to change the value of my int. I can say my int equals 6, semicolon. So notice how I did not specify the data type again. I did not say int. You only specify the data type when you are creating the variable. My variable called my int is already created. So I don't have to say it again. Now I'm just changing it later on. So I'm just saying my int equals 6. I'm using the assignment operator again to overwrite the whatever is in my int. So now my int, that storage location, is holding the 6. The 5 is gone. It's holding this new variable 6. This is what you would have to do if you did not initialize your variable. Meaning, if I did int my int semicolon, now later on in the code, I can say my int equals 5. So this is not initialization anymore because I didn't give the value of the variable right away when I was declaring it. But this will still work fine. My int now has the value of 5. So you may be noticing that this green squiggly line is under the word my int. And basically, green squiggly lines mean that it is a warning. The compiler is giving me a warning. Warnings mean that the program will still run, everything is fine, it's just giving me a warning that something could be changed, maybe it's giving, it's giving me a heads up to maybe, oh, you may want to do this instead of that. So they're just a warning. If you see a red squiggly line, that means that there is an error, and your program will not compile, and it will not run. So you cannot run your program when there are red, red squiggly lines. So if I put my mouse over my int, I'm going to see the warning. And it just says that the variable, my int, is assigned. So I gave it a value. 
but its value is never used. So it's saying that I declared a variable, but I, I'm not using it. So it's kind of a waste is what they're saying. So it's giving me that warning saying, hey, you could be wasting some memory right now because you're not actually using it. But that will change shortly. The last thing I want to do in this lecture is just show you one more way of how we declare a variable because this lecture is only about declaring variables the next one will be about how we can actually display the values of these variables into the console so that we can see what they actually look like um, so the last thing I want to show you like I said is I want to show you how we can declare multiple vari variables on the same line because for example if I wanted to create two variables like I said, like I did before, int my int semicolon, int my int two semicolon. I had to use two semicolons and I had to say int twice. So there's a little uh, code replication here or duplication here. So if you want to make this in one line, if you don't like seeing them split like this, even though I personally like seeing them split, I think it's more organized. You can um, declare variables, multiple variables on the same line. The, all you have to do is separate them by a comma. So I can say int my int comma my int two semicolon. So now I declared two variables in the same line, and then later on I can say my int equals five and my int two equals six. Or if I didn't want to do that, I can also do it in line. I can say five and six right there. But what what I want to point out is notice how there's only one semicolon and there's only one int keyword the data type so if you want to declare multiple data type or multiple variables of the same data type you can do them just by separating them by a comma so like i said that is it for this lecture in the next lecture we'll be talking about how do we actually display this the values of my variables into the console the console is a black box that we can display text to and when we display our variables to the console, but we'll be able to actually see what values the variables were holding.